Well, ten years ago, Celtic recorded one of their best ever European victories, a 5-0 win over Sporting Lisbon to overturn a two-goal first-leg deficit. Under pressure, both on and off the field, Frank Connor's side were looking tonight to draw upon the memory of that famous victory to lift some of the depression surrounding the club. The commentator for this UEFA Cup first-leg tie is Rob McLean. Well, it's a bigger buzz than it might have been as Celtic and Sporting Lisbon take the stage. Ground capacity was pegged at 23,000 for safety until UEFA relented on Friday and gave the Parkhead club the all clear to boost that figure to 42,000. So frantic activity over the last couple of days to try to sell those extra tickets. It's the third Celtic team caretaker boss Frank Connor has had to pick. The first beat Dundee, the second drew with Hibbs. Mike Galloway and Mark McNally are out, but Peter Grant passed a fitness test, and that means no change from Saturday's lineup. It's a night to remember for Irishman Paul Byrne making his European debut in only his third first team game. Signed from Bangor for £70,000, he'll play wide on the right. Sporting Lisbon are league leaders in Portugal, so coach Bobby Robson has done as little tinkering with the team as possible. Average age of these 11, 23. Goalkeeper Paolo Costinha is only 20. Bulgarian international Krasimir Balakov is their top scorer this season. But here's their best known player, Jorge Cadetta, 25 years old, and in his first international, he scored two of the five Portuguese goals which demolished Scotland's World Cup hopes in Lisbon back in April. Referee tonight, Bernd Heinemann from Germany. So Celtic in their chain strip kickoff. It's almost 10 years to the day since Celtic beat Sporting Lisbon 5 0 here after a 2 0 defeat in Portugal. One of the Parkhead team's finest European performances. How they'd love a repeat of that tonight. Cool defending. Capucho, Malakov and Cadetta exchanging passes. Gary Gillespie underneath that. So already some lively interchanges at the end of that Celtic penalty area. Pacheco is there. Pacheco will strike it. It was Valx, the Dutchman, trying to get in the end of it. There's Sosa. Breaks to Cadetta. Blocked by Pat Bonner, couldn't hold it, it was a rasping shot from the Portuguese international. Early jitters for Celtic. The captain getting an early opportunity as the ball broke to him at the edge of the area. And Pat Bonner well behind it. So quick on the counter, Celtic will be well aware of that. Here's Tony Mowbray. Happy to be back in the first team picture, having missed much of the season. Was Valk again climbing over Greeny and the shot from Charlie Nicholas. Nicholas a bit disappointed. It seemed to open up in front of him. Greeny causing all sorts of problems and Nicholas had it with more time and room than he thought. And it wasn't far away. Now forward from Gillespie. That's a good ball which picks out Jenny Greeny. Looking for Paul Byrne. He was caught flat footed as the ball was played. Away first time from Costinha. Cadete beaten by Mowbray, Collins, Craney, Nicholas looking for the right foot shot. Makes a reflection, does it one for Craney as Nicholas intended. It's a furious start to this game, it's been played at a ferocious pace. Paul Byrne forward, well he had time there, rushed it somewhat and the sporting defence had moved out. So just that Nicholas shot which flew past for Costinha to deal with so far. And one save for Pat Bonner to cope with. Souza against McStay. Nicely knocked down by Craney. Nicholas finds Byrne. Craney, chance! And Johnny Craney! start for Celtic, Jerry Craney with the control and the finish, and just what Celtic wanted. Ex 
excellent control from Crenny, and he wasn't going to miss that one. Moved off the defender, a spectacular attempt to stop Crenny. 1-0. Fourth goal in four games for Jerry Crenny, in a rich vein of form. Nelson wants it, and gets it. Capuccio making the run up ahead, but Nelson couldn't find him. Celtic taking heart as Sporting can seek possession. Mowbray gives it away though for Celtic. And Capuccio on the break has Balakov on the outside. Adete in the middle. Oh, and a chance. Well, a glorious opportunity in front of goal for Pacheco. The cutback from Balakov. And he knows he should have done better. And Celtic defence will be asking questions about why Pacheco could find as much room as this. Torres tries to pick out Balakov. Gillespie and Mowbray almost getting in each other's way, but Eddie Gillespie eventually clears. Now this is a break on for Celtic. Craney feeds Byrne. Nicholas Collins. John Collins will be disappointed with that one. Celtic breaking quickly and effectively, and that was a chance for Collins. Miscuing, and he wanted desperately to put that on target. Celtic fans frustrated. No Bray above Capuccio, and... It was the sporting player who was the offender in that challenge. Mowbray aiming for Collins. Collins gets his head to it. Charlie Nicholas. Nicholas goes down in the area. No penalty, says referee Heinemann. Here was that controversial moment as Collins headed it down, trailed away by Nicholas. Well, possibly the goalkeeper getting a hand to the ball. Trying to find Jerry Craney, but this is looking good again for Celtic. Paul McStay, Collins on the left. Collins and Craney waiting. There's the cross, there's Jerry Craney. Saved by Costinha, but Craney's been a real thorn in the sporting defence so far. One goal and a good effort again. The pitcher's chest. Balakov has Nelson. And again, it's Celtic wanting to win that ball back. And again, it's Paul McStay. Neat touch, Nicholas. McStay again. Again, they're looking for Charlie Nicholas, but a bit over ambitious that time. Paisha dwelling on the ball. Craney fields Nicholas and Craney again. Could this be number two? Shaves the outside of the post, and Jenny Craney knows he should have made it too. Well, Paisha made the mistake in the sporting defence, and this was a golden opportunity for Craney's second. Charlie Nicholas had the first touch. The Portuguese thought Craney was offside. He wasn't. Took his time. Blasted it wide. And again, Dutchman Vox looks up and not really too much happening up ahead for him. Nelson goes down, there didn't seem to be too much in that, but the benefit of the doubt is given to Sporting as the whistle goes for half-time and Celtic have the lead. Jerry Craney with the all-important opening goal which has given Celtic so much heart, so much confidence. Excellent control from the striker. Took it down on his chest and rifled in the right foot shot. Four goals in four games for Craney. Celtic lead Sporting at half-time by one goal to nil. Sporting restart. They'll be disappointed with their showing so far. They're a team bang on form. They won their first six league games and dropped their first point in the first division on Saturday. But... Much of the reason for that is the performance of Celtic in the first half. They've done just about everything right. 
closing the Portuguese down, not giving them time on the ball. And when the opportunities have created themselves, Jerry Crane has put at least one away. Balakov to Cadetta. A noticeable injection of urgency already in the sporting performance, but burn on the break. Nicholas is in the middle. There's Charlie Nicholas. Good play by Paisha. Just let that run through to Costinha. Neat touch from Capuccio. But Tom Boyd's got the pace to get him back, although Capuccio eluded him and Tony Mowbray. Foul by Mowbray. Neat skill there from Capuccio. He was overshadowed for much of the first half by Boyd, but trying to show what he can do against the crisp tackling of Tony Mowbray. Pat Bonner didn't look entirely comfortable. That was Balakov who decided to have a crack from well out, but from that angle, Pat Bonner watching it go comfortably wide. Flicked on by Balakov. Shabakov, Capuccio, here's a chance. Cadete in the middle, Capuccio shot. And tipped over the top by Pat Bonner. Well, he hasn't had too much to do, Pat Bonner. But he certainly saved Celtic there with a save at the near post. And Capuccio was given a lot of room on that right-hand side. Tom Boyd will be a bit concerned about that. Good save, Bonner. Torres will take the resulting corner. Cadete almost. Balakov. Slightly high, slightly wide, but he found the room to turn. As he got on the end of the Torres corner, Cadete tried and failed. It was a good turn by Balakov. Back to Costinha. Over his head. And away from Gillespie. Breakdown in communication between McGinley and McStay. Nelson has Capuccio up ahead. There's a neat return. Nelson again. Kadita. Balakov. Opportunity from Nelson. And he's annoyed with himself. That was. A good scoring chance inside the Celtic area. It was a quick counter. Good interchange between Nelson and Capuccio. And again, when the ball was played back by Cadetta. And Nelson, not the finish he was looking for. Well, Bobby Robson's had his substitutes up, warming up on the track, and he may well make a change shortly. Jerry Crinney had more time than he thought there. But Celtic still have it. On from McGinley. And again. Paul McStay. Shooting opportunity. He struck it well. Paul McStay is still searching for his first goal of the season. And he certainly had the opportunity to strike that one. Just a fraction too high. Costinho watching it go over. Shows it to Balakov. He's got some pace as Nelson. Balakov likes the left foot. Away from Gillespie, he's made some important interventions for Celtic. And here he comes on the counter. A bit rushed with that one, though. Shabakov. Torres. There's Pacheco, the former Benfica player. Cadete! Well, he climbed high to get the header. Couldn't direct it away from Pat Bonner. And that will be a worrying moment for the Celtic defence. We haven't seen too much from the Portuguese international up front. But he beat Mowbray there, although he didn't trouble Bonner. So is that to Pacheco. Neat skill, Pacheco beats three Celtic defenders. There's the chip shots. 
too much on the chip at the end of that, but he certainly produced the skill to tease his way past the Celtic defence. First there was Byrne, then there was Peter Grant, and then there was Gary Gillespie. Got himself into a very good position, and he'll be disappointed with this attempt. Ball from Grant to Crinney. McGinley in support. Burns on the right. Nicholas in the middle. There's Jerry Crinney. Crinney showing a few signs of tiredness. He's certainly been a pile of effort so far. That's great skill from Balakov, keeping possession under all sorts of pressure. Grant. Nicholas. What a ball that is for Crinney. Jerry Craney tumbles down. Nicholas on his left foot, trying to jink his way past Paisha, disappointed. It's a quick counter this with Chebakov. Souza, Cadete in the middle. Others getting there. Chebakov, Bonner's out. And the dive put Chebakov off, he still has it. Into the side net, and that's relief for the Celtic defence. That was a lightning break by Sporting. With some quick passing and good running off the ball. This was Souza. And it was Sherbakov racing through the middle, and Pat Bonner's dive put him off. A 1 0 defeat will not be that disappointing for Sporting Lisbon. They will feel that they can do what is required in the return in Lisbon, so it's important that Celtic keep pushing for the second goal. Here's Balakov again, he's looked a very impressive player. Tackled by Collins. The Bulgarian wins the corner. Well, they're not exactly piling players in, or sporting. Balakov's corner. Pat Bonner can't get there. All sorts of trouble against Kadeta. And he was almost beaten by that near post head flick. Up he went, well, he didn't really get up. And that was Kadeta's head flick. A couple of feet wide. Balakov to Sosa, Figo. Evades the mixed day challenge. Lots of room for Pacheco. The shot almost turning into a cross. Chebakov looks for the quick return. Chebakov! Brilliant save by Pat Bonner. The danger's not over, Pacheco. Scramble in front of goal, Pat Bonner claims it. And Bonner saves Celtic with a save of great importance. Here was the build-up to it. And eventually Pacheco with lots of room for the shot. Great block by Bonner. It was Shobakov who played the 1-2 and took it on the volley, saved Bonner. Bounce meets Craney. Craney's control. State of Brian O'Neill. He seems to be filling that position on the right hand side of midfield, which Barn was occupying. Now two against three, it's Balakov. Pacheco on the left, Cadete in the middle. Pacheco with a chip, and again, Pat Bonner. Had to have quick hands at that near post to touch it behind. Here was the cross, Pat Bonner had to be in the right position, which he was. Well, Celtic must be thinking in terms of a second goal, but they have to survive this onslaught from Sporting. And there's good handling on the corner kick from Luis Figo. Looking forward to the World Cup finals, he hopes, with the Republic of Ireland and hoping also for a place in the next round of the UEFA Cup. Flicked on by Brian O'Neill. Torres picks it up. As the final whistle goes, Celtic have beaten Sporting Lisbon by a goal to nil. 
Jerry Craney with the only goal of the game, but Pat Bonner making a series of important saves for Celtic in the second half, a sporting threatened to come back into it. It's still, though, a fragile lead for Celtic to take to Lisbon. Jerry Craney got the, the only goal after nine minutes. Good finish from him. But how Celtic would have loved a second. It's still delicately balanced as this game goes to the return in a fortnight's time. Celtic 1, Sporting Lisbon 0. Frank, how confident do you feel that Celtic can get through to the next round of the UEFA Cup? I would think the, well, the one or two injuries that's been for this match uh, clears up. Plus, I think they'll be able to score a goal uh, over there. Because I think, you know, we'll make chances. It'll be a very, very difficult match because they're a very good team. I think we'll make chances over and get a goal. How happy were you tonight? I imagine happier with the first half than the second half. I was, and I, th I think the first half should have been at least two, maybe three up with tremendous chances. The second half, we lay off them a wee bit, we let the game go a wee bit longer, and we suffered because of it. Then saying that, we denied them uh, space in 18 yards. I mean, I think they only had about three shots, four shots at goal, which uh, all credit to Tony Mowbray and Gary Gillespie, big packy. Bobby, a 1 0 win for Celtic. How happy are you with that? Uh, not too happy. Um, I can't change the result. But we came to, to get a, a better result. I didn't think we would lose, and we came to score. I, I played a, a team comprised of good attacking players, and you probably saw that anyway with our second half performance, because we've dominated the play very much in the second half, made four, five, maybe six chances, two half penalties as well. It hasn't quite gone for us in, in, in the box. But overall, we've played very well, and we are unlucky to be going home, you know, losing 1-0. Did Celtic perform as you expected they would? They probably played a little bit better in the first than, than maybe I thought they would have done. They took their goal well, and McStay in, in, in the first half um, used the space that he had very well, passed the ball well, and was always, you know, developing the play and so forth. We tightened up on them in the second half because we had to do that, and threw Susan and Sherbakov out to midfield players, controlled the, the game, and from that, because we, you know, are very good at passing the ball with those two players, we sort of managed some very good attacks and, and controlled much, much of the game. Paul, that must have been one of your best performances for a long time. Yeah, I really enjoyed it tonight. Uh, I just saw the last two or three weeks uh, I've come into a game a wee bit. Uh, and again, I was happy tonight. Happy enough with, with the result. We got a win to take to Portugal and uh, that was the most important thing. Have you been stung by some of the criticism and the fact that you were left out of the Scotland team last week? Yeah, it was a wee bit of a blow, but uh, just got to take these things in the chin, really, and uh, try and bounce back from them. Uh, I was happy enough on Saturday with my performance and again tonight. But again, uh, against opposition like tonight, we got the win and uh, going to Portugal with a one-goal lead. Uh, it, it should maybe help us to get through the next round. Good result for Celtic. Marvellous match. And all credit, I think, first to Sporting Lisbon, Billy, because they, they, yeah. they didn't come to shut up shop, did they? Oh, they certainly didn't. It's the most open uh, performance I've seen from a visiting team at Celtic Park in a long time. Um, but I think they carry certain dangers over there. Certainly... Frank Connor's right. I think Celtic will make chances over there because the the least impressive thing about the Portuguese was their defence. But uh, they've got a couple of quality players in Sousa and or Sousa, whatever they call them, and <laughs> Balakov. They, they were excellent, particularly in the second half, and they really controlled the match. Mm. Um, a lot of good football chances, from yeah. both, both sides. Oh, Celtic yes. got off to the, the oh, best aye. possible start, of course, with that goal after just nine minutes from Jerry. Well taken goal, it, too. It wasn't was. It? Um, it's a nice build-up and it's a nice ball. I think Jerry Crane does exceptionally well here. Controls his chest, looks up, sizes up the whole situation and finishes well. Um, he's really he, fired across, isn't yeah, it? I mean, he, yeah. he kills it very well, doesn't he? Well, it, it's smashed in control and it's a good finish as well. And that's the ideal start. And it, at that stage, everything looked well. But Lisbon, is, as we said, always looking to come forward tonight. And they had a couple of chances uh, of their own, obviously. They did. This was a, this was a real let-off. Probably fell to, to Pacheco's wrong foot and uh, didn't finish at all well, but that's the kind of breaks you look for in, in European football. And certainly here, but they opened up the defence. I think that uh, Frank Connor mm. uh, will be concerned about the ease in which they opened him up. This was a chance. Um, John Collins snatched it, he shot there. I think, to be fair to him, the defender might have blocked a, a good shot, and John was probably aware of him coming in. Maybe a little bit of guile might have been better here, taking it inside him, but certainly it was a real opportunity. Now, when this incident first took place, we both thought, 
penalty kick. Definitely. We'll see it from this angle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in actual fact, it's an exceptional save. But uh, when you look at it from the, the normal angle, I, I certainly thought it was a, a penalty kick. But there you are. That's typical of of Sporting Lisbon. Young defenders and Jerry Craney here. His first touch lets him down just a little bit. You know, he gets it. He gets the return pass from from Charlie Nicholas. You'll see it here. He takes it with his left foot and he keeps it on his left foot. Now he wants it on his right foot and he's got to hesitate about it. He's got to break his stride and I think that's what caused him to really scuff his shot there. Sadly, that, that might be a key moment because had, had Jerry Crane made it 2-0, we've got a different game. Because oh, in the yes. second half, Frankie Bonner was called upon two or three times to make very good saves, wasn't he? That's right. What Celtic needed was the second goal. But here we see the quality of their play. I mean, it's a tremendous ball. And uh, it, it, it's a great shot. Packy stands up to it. And plays it over comfortably, but it takes a lot of heat out of that. Now here again we see, you know, the, we see the control that they've got just in a lovely one. This too, is a great save. That's a tremendous save. That's the kind that win win your games. And here's a wee bit of luck that he needs as well. Having made the good save, he gets a little bit of luck. The ball breaks down, and he's quick enough to to take the danger away from Celtic. And another one coming up again. There it is. Yeah, that's it. It's great reflexes. Oh, it's a great, great effort. And so, I mean, when we see all those incidents put together, Celtic maybe shouldn't be unhappy to have kept a clean sheet, which is always important. I think it's very important. Mm. Um, no, they, they shouldn't be unhappy because they were a good side, a very young side, very mm. talented. Uh, but it's a good result. It's good to win your home matches. Uh, we've seen Aberdeen going away from home. Mm. Yep. And doing well. That's right, um, no, that's right. We've seen Norwich last night doing well going away from home. Sure. Hopefully Celtic can do well. We also heard tonight from, from Michael Kelly, who confirmed that Celtic have now reached agreement with uh, Stoke City to uh, come to some sort of arrangement over Lou Macari. They haven't yet spoken to Lou Macari, but it now seems as if uh, he may well be in position by the weekend. Briefly, your old teammate as the new Celtic manager, how would you feel about that? Yeah, well, Lou's got good, uh, he's got good credentials. Um, he was a smashing player to play with, because real determined little man, real powerful little man, good player. Mm. And he's taken a lot of those qualities into management with him.